This video is brought to you by Cool Green Clothing. Cool Green Clothing is a Baltimore-based clothing line that started back in 2018 and has been growing strong ever since. Make sure you follow Cool Green Clothing on Facebook and IG at Cool Green Clothing and check out their website, coolgreenclothing.com, where you can find the latest Cool Green fashions and hats, women's apparel, and the latest men's collection. Remember, if you ain't coolin' and get in the green, you're in the way. I don't know now you know, man. Come check them out, man. <laughs> Flat they, out. Oh, they That's know now. Doing. They waking up. They That's waking all we up. Know you they waking up. There's a whole lot of that shit going on right now. <laughs> today. Oh, you know what I mean? You see, you see the hat dripping. You see the shirt it, dripping. Exactly. Me. My nigga dripping all on the right. cement out this get bitch, right. man. You feel me? We dripping all on the dripping all on the cement. What is going on YouTube fan? This your boy Tony two times and we back with another episode of the Baltimore Way, man. Before I start, be sure to like, comment, share, definitely watch the video to the end. Let's get right into it. Sometimes people that are involved in law, such as judges and prosecutors, might get put in a situation where they have taken so many people's freedom, the levels of revenge becomes high. We hear about cases of judges being targeted, prosecutors, even COs. But today on the Baltimore Way, we will be discussing a cold case about a Baltimore prosecutor named Jonathan Luna, whose body was found in rural Pennsylvania under crazy circumstances. Let's talk a little bit about the man before we get into the situation. Jonathan was born on October 21st, 1965, and grew up in New York by the Yankees Stadium, Patterson Projects in the South Bronx. Jonathan's parents, his father, a Filipino man, and his mother, a black woman, pushed the man to do great things. He would eventually go to North Carolina School of Law and a few other schools. After receiving his degree, Jonathan would return back to New York City to serve as a prosecutor. The young Jonathan would get married and have two children. When he would leave New York to move to Baltimore for an opportunity to become an assistant United States attorney. Once getting to Baltimore, Jonathan started receiving some big cases, including a Baltimore County bank robbery case in which over $30,000 would go missing before being turned in. Jonathan would continue to rise in the ranks, eventually getting his last case before his death a Baltimore record label called Stash House Records. Two men were charged and accused of the record label being a cover up for trapping and other activity. Police allege it was also used as a real stash house to store smack. At first the trial started as just a drug investigation, but then witnesses and police tried to tie the two men to a body, alleging a man robbed Stash House and for that he was allegedly hit. Jonathan was on the case but he wouldn't make it to trial the next day. According to reports from co-workers, Jonathan thought his job was in jeopardy and would often say he was looking for a new career. They also stated about two weeks before his death, the man seemed shaky and a little paranoid. They didn't know if it came from previous cases or the new case, but this is where things get crazy. Jonathan would leave a Baltimore courthouse one night and hop on I-95 using his easy pass in Delaware but not anywhere else. As he made his way to Pennsylvania on his trip, allegedly Jonathan stopped in Newark, Delaware and withdrew $200 from his account. Soon after he crossed into Pennsylvania and got gas. About four in the morning, Jonathan was last spotted at a toll in PA. Then he allegedly ended up behind a business in Denver, Pennsylvania, according to records. The first employee of the business arrived to work about 5 a.m. when he noticed a car with his lights off in the front and some nearby water with blood all over the doors. When the workers went to investigate, that's when they noticed a body face down in the water, allegedly stabbed over 36 times with other injuries as well. The man had a court ID around his neck. It was Jonathan. As the Baltimore courts got wind of the news, at first it seemed as though it was due to the fact of the trial of Stash House Records in which Jonathan had 
court the next day before his death. City officials allege it had something to do with the body being added to the case, but the lawyers of the defendants quickly argued hurting Jonathan would have hurt the man's case more than help them because of plea deals. Now at Square One, Baltimore and Pennsylvania were both trying to figure out what happened. Some allege it was a woman. Some said it was two blood types in the car. But the crazy thing is, some thought even though he was hit over 36 times, it was a suicide. But others thought it was a murder case. Jonathan's work computer was checked. His steps were tracked from earlier that day and no leads were found. A lot of speculation would come years later after the case went cold, including that it was blood on his toe pass, so he was already hurt before entering Pennsylvania. Also about some other cases he covered, including the bank robbery in which money came up missing. It has been different attempts for the courts to open back up this case. Some feel as though evidence was overlooked because Jonathan had been threatening to blow the whistle on some corruption, the money to missing, or on other prosecutors or judges. It seems crazy to mark it off as a suicide. And for the courts not to solve a case of one of their own, this seems super mysterious. This case still remains cold till this day. It seems like somebody really wanted Jonathan gone and forgot about him. It's probably deeper than we could ever imagine. But hey, that's the Baltimore way. Man, it's crazy. So yeah, you know what I mean? It's a lot of speculation in this case. They was even saying when they checked his computer, he had started like a dating website where he put on that. He a married black man, but he looking for a white woman. So they were saying it had something to do with a woman. Then they were saying it was two sets of blood in the car. So they were saying somebody else was in the car with him. Then they tried to say, like I said, you feel me? He chopped himself up 36 times. You feel me? That's what they tried to say. They tried to say it was a suicide. So yeah, this is a wild story. When I looked into it, it's a lot of different, you know what I mean? Aspects of this case would seem real crazy. Like it really don't make sense. It really seemed like something out of a movie. Like he just went through the toll and just ended up in the back of a building, gone. You know, but yeah, man, crazy story, you feel me? Rest in peace, bro, though, you know. This an older case, you know what I mean? But they still trying to open it back up to this day. His family and people like that, they trying to get in contact with the courts and say it's missing evidence and stuff like that. But I feel like somebody somewhere don't want it open back up because they ain't look back into it. But y'all already know, man, this is another episode of The Baltimore Way. Be sure to like, comment, share. Y'all already know I appreciate the love and support. Love y'all fine. It's your boy Tony two times. I'm out.